You're with the hard facts from the CNN News 18, Federal Bank Primetime Studios. Viewers, tonight, viewers, tonight, I let the plain hard facts do all the talking. If you don't think that demographic change can have an impact on a nation's destiny, then it is best you follow closely tonight to what we are going to be putting out. Hopefully, by the end of my introduction tonight, we will have closed the gap. The reason I'm talking about demographic change and destiny is because Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma has picked on this issue today, viewers. He has said that Assam's rapidly rising Muslim population that he estimates to be above 40% possesses an existential threat to the culture of indigenous Assamese. He has come out and talked in fearful terms of what he sees is a dramatic demographic shift at the state level. He says that just after independence, the Muslim population in Assam was 12%. And he's talking about the 1951 census viewers. And he now says that that population could be above 40%. In fact, viewers, we know that in some districts of Assam, the Muslim population has grown to more than 75-80%. We'll come to all of that later, but first listen in to what he said. मेरा आसाम में मुस्लिम पापुलेशन 40 परसेंट हो चुका है। 1951 में 12 परसेंट था। आज आसाम में मुस्लिम पापुलेशन 40 परसेंट। हम जिला की जिला खो चुका है। तो मेरे लिए ये मुद्दा पॉलिटिकल नहीं है। मेरे लिए ये जीना और मरने का मुद्दा है। The Congress, of course, is not buying this. It has hit out at Sarma. The party claims that Sarma is polarizing the state with communal prejudice. In fact, Gaurav Gogoi, the Congress deputy leader in the Lok Sabha, has even accused the Assam chief minister of hypocrisy. Gogoi says, and let me quote him, Himanta Biswa Sarma seems to be suffering from amnesia in Ranchi. Only two months ago, he was seen dancing and singing in minority-dominated areas of Assam. Clearly, it was not a matter of life and death when he wanted votes for the BJP, unquote. Now, viewers, while the Assam chief minister's motives might be political, his views on the threat posed by illegal Muslim influx from Bangladesh aren't without basis. In fact, both the Supreme Court and the High Court have at different times sounded the alarm over the threat from demographic change brought on by illegal immigration. Sample this, in 2005, the Supreme Court, a bench of the Supreme Court said the impact of, quote, aggression, unquote, represented by large-scale illegal migration from Bangladesh had made the life of the people of Assam and Tripura, quote, wholly insecure, and the panic generated thereby had created fear psychosis, unquote, in other northeastern states. In 2008, the Delhi High Court ruled that the illegal Bangladeshi immigrants, quote, pose a danger to India's internal security, unquote. So are the courts also guilty, viewers, of playing to sectarian galleries? Not in the least bit. That is, if you are to go by the hard facts, and remember, viewers, I always put out the hard facts so you get closer to the truth, you can separate Fact from fiction. The hard facts tell us that there has been a visible impact of illegal Bangladeshi immigration into India. While the MHA has put the number at 20 million, which doesn't sound like much, but in certain districts along the Indo-Bangladesh border, the change is palpable. That 20 million illegal Bangladeshi immigrants estimate was put out, viewers, by Kiran Rijiju, when, of course, he was serving as MOS home. In Assam's Dhubri district, the Muslim population has risen by almost 11% between 2001 and 2011. 
in Bengal's Murshidabad from 63% to 71%. In Meghalaya's East Khasi Hills from 73% to over 81% in the same period. Tripura by all accounts has been the worst affected. Increased population is one of the first obvious implications. Estimates suggest that there are over 20 million illegal Bangladeshi immigrants in India. Then there's always an accompanying demographic shift. The influx has changed the demographic pattern in the northeastern states, making locals feel overwhelmed. For instance, the proportion of the local Tripuri population was reduced from 59.1%, almost 60% in 1951, to just 31% in 2011. This was according to the census of India. Viewers, I'm not making this up. Cultural and social tensions. The sudden change has affected the way of life of the local population, leading to simmering tensions between the two sides. Obviously, viewers, locals who were once dominant, their culture was dominant, find themselves relegated. And these are illegal immigrants that are coming in that are relegating the indigenous to the side viewers. So obviously there's going to be a backlash or there is going to be a fight for turf. And that also leads to a strain on resources. The large number of immigrants has substantially contributed to the strain on India's resources. And we can go into those facts. But there are so many viewers it becomes impossible to encapsulate in just a few moments. There are national security implications. I've already told you how the High Court reacted in the context of illegal immigration from across the border. Insurgency, the presence of illegal immigrants has also fueled insurgency in some states. It's not just in India. In some nations, the impact has altered their identity, culture and politics nationally. Think about Albania. The Ottoman Empire's legacy and high birth rates have made Albania a majority Muslim country, shaping its culture, politics and identity. The indigenous are gone. Bosnia and Herzog, Herzegovina. The Muslim population's growth has shifted the country's demographics, influenced its political landscape and contributed to the complex identity politics of the region, even leading to wars. Kosovo. Another country that saw large-scale violence, majority Muslim population has shaped the country's independence movement and political destiny with implications for the Balkans' regional dynamic. And we saw that exploding viewers in the 90s. Malaysia, the growth of the Muslim population has led to Islam playing a larger role in politics, law, society, transforming the country's identity and governance. Lebanon, the influx of Syrian refugees, many of whom are Muslim, since the Syrian civil war has significantly altered Lebanon's demographics, exacerbated sectarian tensions and influenced the country's political landscape. Neighboring Myanmar, I'm not even talking about Pakistan viewers. Neighboring Myanmar, the influx of Rohingyas from Bangladesh has contributed to ethnic and religious tensions, leading to violence and displacement in shaping the country's political destiny. The Balkans, massive crisis in the Balkans. North African refugees raise concerns about demographic change, potential shifts in the political landscape in countries like Serbia, Bulgaria, Macedonia. Viewers, there is more than enough evidence to underline the fears expressed by Himanta Biswas Sarma. Should we be therefore ignoring him, trivializing his concern? Those are fundamental questions. Let's open this up. Dr. Anand Ranganath, Anishkan Bhandari, Tehseen Punawala and Kamru Chaudhary are here with us. Mr. Kamru Chaudhary, you hail from Assam. I'm sure you have seen on the ground the demographic shift. How can that not be existential, sir? At least for indigenous home populations. Yeah, Rahul, first and foremost, can you give me the definition of what is the indigenous Assamese population out here? What are the boundaries of Assam as a state? When did it, the Assam state come into existence? Was the Dubri or the Barak Valley or the Ashwaj Suruma Valley part of Assam? Were the demographic changed in 1950-1947? Or did it change in 1874 when the Assam as an administrative unit came into being because of the British? These are the questions that need to be pondered. Just gaslighting on the statement of a person, Himanta Bishya Sharma, whom I refuse to 
indulge in or engage it with his comments because every time he vomits he vomits venom he venom he, he is venomous to a particular community of assam i don't know why but even during the first chief minister of assam gopinath bordoloi refused to accept 20 lakh hindu bengalis refugees from bangladesh that were coming into india he said i am in a position to accept only 3 lakhs but then it was our great prime minister jawaharlal nehru who imposed and who said to gopinath bordoloi lokpriya gopinath bordoloi you have to accept these people and these people migrated into india's barak valley or soil the surma valley when the plebiscite of silet district happened in 1947 after that the salmara district or the uh, dubri barpet uh, dubri uh, or the gualpara these nine districts that you are talking about where the democratic shift has happened were never a part of the ahom kingdom in 1874 prior to 1874 they came into existence. There was a wholesale migration. But when did the Assam state come into being? Well, was it into an Assam or a Bengal presidency? Were the hill districts part of Assam? Were those Barak Valley part of Assam? These are the questions that need to be debated. Just gaslighting and saying that the Assamese population is becoming minority in Assam is, I think, too much in instigating a fear or a fear of, uh, what do you call this, I call it an Islamophobia in Assam. Right. Well, of we course, this is coming from a political party viewers that no, in the 1980s, no, one, let me just finish. Let me finish. No, Islamophobia. Me, You've used some strong words. One, one second. Let me finish one. No, no, one if second, one second. Or your channel is viewed by crores of people. Okay. If I've said anything wrong, I may be, I may be brought to court, but this is the fact, this is the history of Assam. Okay, okay. You One second. go and say that Mr. the Bengali dominated population of Assam mm -hmm. are non assamis okay. That's what the Himanta Bisho Sharma wants to say. Okay. We have seen the Bengali Khadao Andalon of the 1980s, wherein the, uh, where, wherein the Assam Accord came into being. Okay. Will Himanta Bisho Sharma say now that the Assam Accord is a pass? Okay. Will he be able to convince okay. the, the Assamese population of the state that the CAA gaslighting Islamophobia are the is are being the granted citizenship okay, in India. Okay, 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 relax, relax. Will Islamophobia, you gaslighting. Okay, sir, Bengali you ask so many rhetorical questions. Let me let me let me solicit CAA. some responses. I understand, sir. I know it's it's really troublesome for you. One second, viewers. There are many conflicting identity issues, but you know, this gentleman says that oh, when did Assam come into being? Now, viewers. There is a state, there is a state in the South Karnataka today where the government decides to institute a bill which will lead to non kanadigas not getting jobs in the private sector at certain positions. Now viewers, you could ask the question, who is the outsider in, Karn in Karnataka and who is not? When did the state come into existence? What is the cutoff, arbitrary or not? Viewers, there are several states that weren't around, as you know, but they have a claim on being states, independent entities, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Haryana, etc., all on the basis of linguistics, Andhra, Telangana. They didn't exist. Where do you draw that line, viewers? Whose identity do you privilege and whose do you negate by Mr. Chaudhary's great exposition here we should not have a Telangana in fact the Congress viewers didn't really want to if you remember split the state they were against all of this there were riots that led to in fact the creation of both Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh viewers and let me tell you viewers the status quo that we are today talking about where there has been this demographic shift has been enabled by IMDT Act that was brought in by the Congress government, struck down by the Supreme Court. And what did it do? It made it, forget about identifying, it made it almost impossible to throw <coughs> out any illegal immigrants. Dr. Ranganathan, how do you view this situation? This response from Mr. Chaudhary, forget it. He says, first look at the map. Then talk about identity, talk about culture, talk about an assault on culture. 
Uh, I, uh, Rahul, good evening to you and to the fellow panelists. If we are to look at the map, then we are missing the woods for the trees. Because let us also look at the map of 1946 as India stood then. And let us look at the map of 1947. Why are people finding Himanta Biswa Sarma's statement problematic? He has stated the facts. How is stating facts communal? Is it not the fact that a particular religious denomination is increasing compared to the others? Look, if you were to take it as starting point, the premise that all religions are exactly the same, then there is no issue. Why should there be? Because under that premise, if one religious population can be the majority, why can't be the other? But the fact is, all religions are not the same. Some religions exhibit predatory, supremacist, exclusivist views and practices. The truth is, if such a religious denomination becomes majority population, it begins very quickly dictating its social practices upon others. And that is a problem. And that is what Himanta was highlighting. There are some schools in Jharkhand right now that have Friday as a holiday instead of Sunday. We have seen what happens in Kashmir Valley. The sitting chief minister there called for stoning as a punishment. We have seen the state of homosexuals and atheists and women under the majority of such religious denomination. Atheists, Rahul, are condemned to death in 13 Islamic countries. Is this a fact or a fiction? Homosexuals are caned, women discriminated. That is an issue for India. Now the so second the point, point, Rahul, or the more reason that we want the NRC. The NRC is a Supreme Court mandated and monitored exercise with an objective to weed out illegal immigration as stated explicitly in the 2005 Sonoval judgment. Bear me a minute. In 2005, it was the UPA that proposed urgency in drafting the NRC in Assam. <laughs> Chidambaram said he feared, quote, Assam could one day have a Bangladeshi chief minister. Shashi Tharoor said 20 million illegal Bangladeshis are present in India. He alluded them to being termites. In 2005, Mamta Banerjee called it the scourge of illegal Bangladeshi migration. And as to why all politicians cutting across party lines wanted the NRC before some decided to indulge in politics and scaremongering, look, the decadal growth rates in Assam from 2001 to 2011, Hindus grew by 10%, Muslims by 30%, three times faster than Hindus. But if you look at the total fertility rates of both Assamese, Hindus and Muslims, they are below replacement level and the absolute decline is double for Muslims. So what explains this astonishing difference between the Hindu and Muslim growth rates? The finger obviously points to illegal immigration. I now quote from the 2005 Supreme Court judgment that relied heavily on the facts furnished to the President of India by the legendary Governor of Assam, Sri S.K. Sina, quote, the illegal migrants coming into India after 1971 have been almost exclusively Muslims, unquote. Are we going to again ignore the elephant in the room? <laughs> Well, let me ask you, Tehseen Punala, one second, Mr. Chaudhary. Let me ask Tehseen Punala. We've already seen a partition on the back of a demographic shift. You saw it. Thank you for having me on the show, Rahul. Whatever Anand said, let's take it from there. The, honor the Honorable Supreme Court under Justice Gugoi from Assam asked for an NRC in Assam. What happened to it? What Anand does not tell you and what your viewers don't know, the millions of viewers, is an NRC happened in Assam, published on 31st August 2019. Himanta Biswa Sharma, the chief minister who you show right now on screen, was the man who said, junk this NRC. Junk this NRC. You know what happened? Because there were more illegal Hindu immigrants, as per that NRC, than Muslims. Now number two. Anand rightly said that a TFR for both Hindus and Muslims is below to, uh, replacement level in Assam. He's absolutely right. So he alludes that there has been illegal uh, migration and immigration happening from Bangladesh. That's true. If it's happening, the most honorable Home Minister of India, the Chanakya, the man who I often say has the spine of a molten nuclear, should resign, should go and hide somewhere because the border security force and the forces there, the paramilitary controlling our borders under him. Why is he not resigned? Why is his resignation not being sought that people are coming in? Third, when you allude to West Bengal and certain districts in West Bengal, the population increasing, what the viewers are not told is the most honorable Prime Minister of India in 2015, Nashri Narendra Modi ji, signed the enclave exchange with the Bangladeshi Prime Minister while praising the Bangladeshi Prime Minister that she is as strong as a man. Sexist statement, but we will not go into that. What happened? 
that's when the population in those districts increase why don't we put that out and the last thing very often it said listen the muslim population is increased 40% 45% pray please tell me or ask the chief minister to tell me where is these numbers coming from census happened in 2011 the data is not released rajnath singh ji promised he will release the data is not released inke paas number kahan se aaye or number aaye so let it let him release it on the chief minister's letter tomorrow morning tomorrow morning nikal okay. do kin ke paas number hai kahan se number aaye ye okay. yeah, kahan se number aaye yes, sir tehsin puna wala let me give you one line let me use one line okay faltu baatein isliye kar rahe hai mm-hmm. kyunki inko hindu musliman mein divert karna hai warna tell so me can i ask you a question can i ask you a question in karnataka there was a caste census why has that yes. not been published tehsin puna karnataka is bad karnataka is ah, bad sitaram is bad dk is bad rahul gandhi you see bad. the moment you, you ask the pertinent question now let me tell you okay okay now don't shout at me i have only brought out a point that exposes hypocrisy karnataka does, does one second sir karnataka does a caste census the methodology is flawed says sitaram ayya and it is not released correct viewers Rahul Gandhi talks about caste census caste census caste census because they didn't like the res- the the outcome the methodology is suspect so it must be blocked but Himanta Biswa Sharma he should be faulted for stepping in and saying that actually the NRC did not meet its objectives because viewers we know that these illegal immigrants who come in from a particular denomination are quickly processed are given documents so that they can become vote banks and that's why viewers when it came to showing the paper the kagaz they could dr ranganathan wants to come in that's the fact viewers very quickly i want a rebuttal because i have to say this there is absolutely not just as tehsin found nothing wrong in the facts that i furnished I compliment Tehsin. There is absolutely nothing wrong in each and every fact that Tehsin has furnished. Each and every fact. I compliment him on that. But the fact Tehsin is, please, I implore you, think of India. Don't think of Congress or BJP. I, I am standing with you in saying that the BJP has not done enough. In fact, it's probably not done anything in combating this problem. But is that the nub of the debate here? No. the nub of the debate is what himanta bispa sharma has said that is the debate they seen the debate is not whether one political yes. party has done well or not no certainly not and i stand with you on that i compliment you but you are varying from the debate because once again you are talking about hypocrisy and what about no, and, the, and that cuts may, may make one line and that bipesh karan comes may make one line bipesh karan comes you can you in. can't fault no you can't fault one set of political actors for not, not taking the nrc census seriously in that state of assam and another set to give complete exemption and say are to karnataka wale to bahut hi kharab hai aise to nahi hota taisi just give me one line just give me one line before ishkaran comes in hmm. in case of the nrc himanta biswa sharma is on record to say junk it this was supreme court mandated the caste census is not done by karnataka it's a caste survey it's not constitutionally uh, mandated excuse me excuse me tehsin pura wala the please. man who junked it is saying there's a problem my and dear he's the friend, chief minister boss of the home minister my dear so friend he my dear friend tehsin tehsin you can you can spin this whichever way you oh, want but you got oh, caught out it. you got caught out there oh. two censuses viewers <laughs> two different response two standards to judge the leaders who had a problem karnataka with them karnataka is not a census it's a survey oh please Okay. It's not constitutionally mandated. Uh, Supreme Court. Oh, now, you are, now, now, mandated. now we are talking no, no, about. No, no, no. Be now we are talking about constitutionalism. Viewers. Yes. They sir. did it. No, we hang on. To. They did it. No, no. One second. One second, sir. Give me. Give me thirty seconds before the elections, viewers. It was massively publicized even in Bihar. This great census survey. Call it what you As want to. No, no. One second. One second, viewers. One second. when they want to go by statistics that favor their political interests they will be blazoned across emblazoned across the spectrum viewers moment you pull out an inconsistency it becomes a problem that's what's happening here and then they'll say it's not constitutionally mandated it's not this it's not that but we are going to bring one in nationwide etc etc but they still have a problem with the nrc their own allies Mamta Banerjee and company oppose it after having backed it everyone is done a u turn viewers because at the end of the day 
is that 30, 40 percent vote. Now, Ishkaran Bhandari, where do you come in on this? Democracy is destiny. That's pretty much been proven by the examples I've given. But here we are being accused of Islamophobia. Are you an Islamophobe? Rahul, this is an extremely serious debate about Bharat's future and its territorial integrity. So please let me my aggregate time. 40% the chief minister says has become the Muslim population and I, we saw demography's destiny playing on your debate today when the first speaker starts with what are the contours of Assam, when was Assam formed, what is a part of Assam, what is not a part of Assam, that debate was settled in 1947. Raising that debate today in line of a debate on the what is the population of Muslims in Assam reminds me of pre-1947 position where we have seen this play out where the majority districts of Muslim population in both Punjab as well as uh, Bengal went into Pakistan. So we have seen this play out and I found oh, it very, statement. very tragic, but not surprising that today we are having a debate on what are the contours of Assam. So secondly, let's come to the other point. That reminds me of what Sharjil Imam, uh, Islam, what I'm forgetting the name, I think Sharjil Imam, a person in jail, Imam. said, Sharjil get Imam. 5 lakh people, choke off the chicken, choke off the chicken's neck and we can separate northeast. That was again, demography is destiny playing out just two years ago. Now let's come to the third aspect of which. At one point, we are seeing since 1951, how the Muslim population in Assam is increasing. But do we see the other part of it? In Pakistan, the Hindu population from 23% becomes 3.7%. In Bangladesh, it from 22% below, below 10%. And we are given that all the Hindus are not converted or killed there, but they came into the border regions of Bharat. But in Assam, from Bangladesh, the Hindu population goes down. In Bangladesh, the Hindu population goes down. In Bangladesh, the Muslim population has increased. In Assam, the Muslim population has increased. Please tell me what happened to the Hindus who are neither left in Bangladesh nor are present in Assam or even nationally if you see the percentages. So what has happened to those Hindus that believes in face of this saying that Hindus of Bangladesh have come to Assam because the percentage has reduced there. And lastly and the most important point because unfortunately we seem not to learn from history. Rahul, you gave extremely important information globally on what has happened when demography changes. But we have a better and a live example of what has happened in Bharat in 1947, how the very rational of which district will go to which country was based on religious population. We have seen what happened in POK, where illegally Pakistan occupied certain parts, and we have seen what used to happen in Kashmir, where demands of a separate homeland or either an independent country or a part of Pakistan was raised based on religious minority. This <coughs> is the lived-in experience of Bharat. That is why religious population matters, because once you cross a threshold, we have seen how demands of independence starts. If we still don't learn from the lessons of history, bitter lessons of history, then we are condemned to repeat it. Well, let me tell you, viewers, in summation, when people like Kamru Chaudhary attack you and call you Islamophobic for raising an issue of demographic change, you should just ask them, are they misogynists? When the Supreme Court came out and gave Shah Banu her due, her comeuppance, the Congress viewers went the other way. Then you should ask them, are they Hindu-phobic to have brought in the 1991 bill, the Places of Worship Act? Were they Hindu-phobic when they came out with the Wakaf Act, viewers? Ask them those questions. Because if you don't, if you don't, viewers, you will be part of an expedition into gaslighting. Let me tell you. Did anyone ask this question? When refugees of a genocide were deemed migrants viewers migrants were those who deemed their migrants all hindu phobes did they suffer from hindu mesia dr ranganathan is this a pertinent example to pick or not 30 seconds and i wrap up no absolutely and i completely agree with what uh, my good friend ishkaran has said i mean the the proof of the pudding is in the eating. We've already were force fed this in 1940s. What are we doing again? I fail to, I mean, understand why we are intent upon repeating the follies of the past. 
Well, viewers, we are because there is politics at the heart of it. And today, of course, Simanta Biswa Sarma, impolitically, and that sometimes is good, viewers, it's good, impolitically came out and said, look, I'm not making this about politics. For me, this is an existential issue. Who is the me? The me, viewers, is an Assamese at the end of the day, who is seeing this influx from Bangladesh and fears for his future, his culture. Viewers, I have a whole list which I have tweeted of the districts where almost, if you look at the demographic shift, it's almost plus 80% in at least six or seven of them. Big districts in Assam viewers. Big ones. And it's not the only state. Tripura, I've already pointed out. Bengal in pockets, viewers. In fact, if you really expand the lens, you will even look at Uttar Pradesh. I am going to take a short break, viewers. We'll be right back in two minutes precisely because we have a big story coming out of Karnataka tonight.